In this series, you will learn how to model a realistic 3D human skull like this one without sculpting and by only using two reference images for creating a super detailed texture. You can even download these very reference images for free by going to blenderfrenzy.com and signing up for a freebies membership, which is useful if you want to follow along with the videos exactly. And if you want access to even more members-only stuff, like extra videos and the completed 3D Skull model for download, check out the Plus and Pro memberships. But this course is free and beginner-friendly and goes at a pace that is fairly easy to follow along. However, I do assume you are already somewhat familiar with Blender or at least how to navigate in a 3D program. So maybe not necessarily for the ultra beginner. So now we have even more realistic looking skull here. It's looking actually really, really nice. And we haven't done that much. But let's take it one step further. We're going to actually add in shaders to where the light can actually shine and reflect off of it. Because right now we have a light, but that light isn't um, doing anything to our skull. You see there's no effect whatsoever because this is just an image texture that's shining light and emitting light. It's not actually taking light. So going back here, select our skull. Let's go ahead and make this a fake user and also duplicate this. We're going to say skull bake emit, and I'm just going to use this as the emit. So let's go back to our bake. We'll use this for our shader. So I'm going to select the emission shader, press shift S to change it. We're going to change the shader to a principled BSDF. And there we go. This is going to be what will take light. And you can see it's already starting to. So if I grab this, um, it's on, it's only taking light actually right now from our HDRI here. You can see that. So if I rotate that around, you can see that's being reflected on our skull. But I'm not going to do that. Let's do let's add in scene lights. And now we have our light, which is affecting our skull. Let's go to our light properties here. I'm just going to turn that down to 500. Mm. 200 there. There we go. And so I can also click scene world and then it would just use the world as uh, the lighting. So we can do that, but it's a little too shiny right now. So we want to, uh, let's go ahead and pin this here. Uh, we want to change these here, but what's easier is if we come to materials tab, all of this stuff right here is the principal BSDF. That's what this node is here. So it's easier to change it here. So let's go to our layout and our materials tab and we have all of the settings here. So I'm going to turn up the roughness all the way up, uh, turn down the specular all the way down, and then that gets rid of the shininess. Okay, future Justin here. Um, I recorded this before the Blender Conference of 2022, Beacon 22, which has so many good videos and I haven't gone through all of them yet, but I did watch Andrew Price's video on photorealism and I should have known this already, but I didn't. Um, what he said is that if you want an object to have very little reflection, then just crank up the roughness, but don't crank down the specular because everything in the world technically still has some reflection, even if it's very, very small amount, or at least, it seems that way to our eyes. So he said to keep this at 0.5 all times. So you can see that change here. So that's zero and then 0.5 because anything that exists in the world is bouncing off some light. Now the final skull that I have at the end of this video doesn't do that because again, it was recorded before I learned that little tidbit. So I'm correcting it now. Um, except for the teeth, which is a fake shiny from our original image. So let's see here, let's grab this and, um, oh, we've got to also uh, scene lights here. There we go. So now it's using both the HDRA world behind it and this light, which is pretty cool. All right, and uh, we can change the HDRI too to give different uh, looks. Ooh, that's kind of a, a spooky like Halloween type atmosphere. Um, let's see, we can do uh, this, something like that. Ooh, that's that's nice. Gives us a nice 
aligning, we can also rotate that around. But I like it like that. Okay, let's just, um, I'm gonna go to 3D cursor and just scale that light away from the 3D cursor just to kind of get a little bit softer of a light fall there. Okay, so this is looking really good. The last thing I wanna do is add in a bump map. And we've made it really easy to do that with um, our texture here. So I'm gonna take our bake, duplicate that down here. I'm going to click this one to make its own copy. We're gonna call this bake bump. I'm gonna drag out a color here, just let go. And then I'm gonna search for bump and then enter. And then we'll change that to height, plug the normal into the normal. And then you can see, oh, look at what's happening here. <laughs> this is obviously not what we want, but we can adjust it here. First, we, we the reason we made its own copy is because we need to change the color space to non-color data. And that is going to not do a whole lot yet, but if we, start to pull this down and we can adjust the distance and stuff too. Um, I don't think we're using the right UV map. So let's plug this one in here as well. Okay. Well, maybe we are and it's just not doing a lot. Did I copy the wrong one? I must have copied the wrong one. Oh, I know why. So what's happening here? Okay. I'm going to undo all of that. Get back to our bake bump. Okay, the reason that this is black and white is because we didn't actually save anything yet. We didn't save this out, so we need to save our bake to something. You can see this is, hasn't actually been saved yet. So let's save this as. Yeah, so this is our, our bake is the same thing as our ambient occlusion. So we actually just need to save over this, which is fine. JPEG RGB, save. Okay, so let's just double check if I do save as. Okay, yeah, so that's actually has the color now. So if we come back down here and hook that one up again, uh, let's refresh that. Um, well, let's hook that up here. Let's just, uh, I guess, yep, shift X to delete that. We're gonna do that again. Um, save that. Bake, bump, and it's gonna do 001, whatever. So now let's do non-color data here. And yes, so this is what that should look like. Now we can go plug this in. Aha, this is gonna start looking. Yes, so now our bumps are in the right spot. I was gonna say that looks a little bit weird. So when we first put it in, the strength is at 100 and this is what it <laughs> would have looked like which, hey, if this is the look you're going for, that's kind of scary. So just bring that down quite a bit, uh, something like that. And we can also take our light, scale that in towards our model, and just adjust this. with the distance and the strength that you desire. And now when the light goes around it, uh, you can see the bumpiness of the texture there. Let's take our light R, Z, I'm gonna rotate it on the Z to go around. You can see that's going on there. Let's do our scene world here as well, R, Z. It's going around, yeah, and you can see nice bumps there. All right, so then we uncheck our scene world here and then we can actually pull down the strength of this a little bit maybe, um, change the rotation. Yeah, look at that. I think it's looking pretty good. Okay, so all of this has been done in Eevee. It's gonna look different in Cycles. So if we actually come over to here, to Cycles, and do the render this way, uh, it's going to look 
a lot different. So let's bring, let's uncheck our scene world just like we did in material preview. The first thing you're going to notice is that everything in the cavities is much, much darker. In fact, we can actually come over to our shading and uh, let's go back in here and check scene world. We're using this one and strength is down just a little bit and world opacity is down. Let's also come over to our render tab and we're going to click denoise for the viewport and then that gets it, makes it a little bit smoother. Uh, you do still have to wait. Uh, I'm gonna bring this down to 64. So it only goes up to 64 samples, but let's turn off our light. Um, you can see that the difference between here, uh, let's do this and turn off the light as well. This is an EV and then in cycles, the eye cavities are, and nose cavities are so much darker. So, we don't even need the ambient occlusion here. We can just plug this into the base color. And then you can see we have um, just kind of those natural shadows uh, without the ambient occlusion. Or if we did use it, we can, we can bring that down here. So just keep in mind that the lighting fall off and bounce and everything is gonna be different in EV and in cycles. So just depending on which one you wanna render in. And there you go, this is in Cycles. So we've got a really cool, realistic looking skull that we can use for any projects, whether it be a game engine or a fun Halloween project. And this doesn't take very long the way we did it, just projecting from the front and the sides, cleaning it up a little bit, add an ambient occlusion on there and boom, we have realistic looking assets and very little time. So this is the end of the free portion of this course. I'm going to continue tweaking this and making it look even better, doing some more UV work with seams and stuff, and a few other members-only videos for my Plus and Pro members on my website, blenderfrenzy.com. So if you want those, head on over there and become a member today. You can find this video and a whole lot more by going to my new website, blenderfrenzy.com, where you can access lots of free and members-only content, including extra tutorials, downloads, assets, blend files, Q&A live streams, and much more. Signing up helps support me, which in turn gives you more Blender content, so head on over to blenderfrenzy.com and become a member today.